Uh, so I'm Brian Radovich. I am the product manager for DPA and SRM. So DPA is our database performance analyzer. SRM is our storage product. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, DPA data now being available in PerfStack. So uh, DPA, if you don't know about it, uh, does wait time analysis. So we really uh, look at the database. We're um, basically sampling uh, the queries and seeing how often they're running and what they're waiting on. So we're not really looking at CPU and memory as sort of our primary uh, indicator. We're looking at, hey, how long are these queries running? And you know, how long are people actually waiting on that? And then aggregating that over time and pointing users. Uh, uh, we do further analysis and get the uh, the actual wait types. We can tell you what users, that kind of stuff. And um, we put together a story of basically, hey, here are the queries that your users are waiting on. And we do that over time so you can see patterns and, and those types of things. DPA is not in the Orion <laughs> family of products, right? It's built on another platform. It's Java-based. It runs on Linux or uh, Windows. It uses different databases as its back end. However, we've been slowly integrating all that data into, uh, into Orion. So we have specific views that you can go and look at. We build associations so we part participate in, you know, whenever we relate um, like databases to servers or to uh, storage or those types of things. Um, however, uh, if you guys have, have uh, maybe in the, in the last session we did, uh, we had this new thing called PerfStack, and I'll just go ahead and pull it out while I'm talking. Um, let's see, it'll be under home. And we call it PerfStack, and in the, in the dashboard is performance analysis, but we call it PerfStack again. Um, sort of the, the idea with PerfStack was to take any Orion data, any data that's in Orion in any of our modules, network systems, you know, whatever, and expose that data in a view like this, and then make it really easy for you to uh, basically build a story, right? So we wanted you to be able to go and pick whatever data was inside of Orion, um, pull that up and put it on the screen, and build a story of, hey, I'm investigating this problem, right? I, I you know, I'm having slow response time, or my, uh, I've got a network port uh, where there's a bunch of traffic that I don't understand what it is, you know, those types of things. But again, it was limited to what's in Orion. And, and really the reason we bought this is because that's what users were exactly telling us. You, you sort of have all these predefined views. They don't always give us what we want. We have to go build all these queries and pull this data out. And so uh, really the idea was to free the data, right? So sort of take it out of the confines of the database and just make it, expose it here. I just go in, you know, I pick an object and uh, simply sort of all the data that's associated with that object is now available to me. So I can expand these and see all this data. So this is some of the functionality we released before. Uh, one of the new things is we added a, uh, a related data. So this uh, basically goes out into Orion and looks at uh, all of uh, the relationships that have been built automatically, right, or manually by you. And so you can see a whole bunch of new things just appeared. Um, these are uh, uh, basically everything that's related to this. So. Uh, networking, storage, databases, all that kind of stuff. So again, it makes it really easy for you to tell a story um, and pick what you want. Now, I'm going to load another story. One of the great things about this is that you can save these, you can share these. Um, what I like to, to talk about is like this, this can build one version of the truth. If you have an application that's misbehaving, you can go build this view and say this is how we analyze this application. And then you can share that view with others. And whenever there's a problem with that application, you can go look at that. And you know, now that the database data is there, if I would say something like, hey, if your wait time hasn't changed, it's not the database, right? I would go and blame the network or uh, you know, the application or some other part of the, uh, of the stack. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load, uh, let's see, application slow response time called, called by the database. So um, what we see here is um, we've got a response time here that suddenly changed. And again, this is demo data, so be a little forgiving. Uh, that not everything lines up. But we can see that uh, this is the wait time here. So we show these as bars. So this is something that's new in, in PerfStack. But uh, basically, uh, you're seeing the total amount of wait time for that instance, right? So this is the, the amount of time for whatever time slice this is. We're looking at 24 hours. So I'm guessing that maybe these are one hour chunks or 30 minute chunks. Um, but for that time, that's how much wait time uh, was occurring in the database. And uh, one of the cool things we can do is we can say, like, again, if I'm in the middle of troubleshooting or something, I can highlight this. And over here, we have a new section uh, that's called the Data Explorer, right? And again, this is all, uh, the top line is coming from 
uh, application, and everything below this is coming from DPA. So uh, this is wait time. I've got wait time, uh, total wait time, and wait time by type, uh, which is the second bar chart, and we'll explore that in a minute. But I could drag anything else in here. Once I created related objects, I could pull in, you know, LUNs or pools or uh, the you know, other parts of the application. If we've got WPM, we can look at steps and all that kind of stuff. Um, but one of the uh, cool things is, is now that we have DPA data, we can actually see uh, the queries, right? So now I can see that for, you know, this time slice, which was, let's see, 1.30 to 4.16 uh, a.m., um, we had uh, 3,300 seconds of wait time for this particular query, and we can actually pull this up and, and get a nice slice, uh, formatted version of this query. So again, if you're trying to um, diagnose application problems, those types of things, if you've got some, if wait time appears, you can quickly drill down and see, hey, what query was this, or what types of wait, or what user was it? We have all those types of slices of, uh, of information in the data. Um, one of the cool things about this, when you think about APM, um, you know, APM is awesome in that you can instrument your code, and you, know, you can look at all your different uh, traces and then figure out like, hey, where is the slowness coming from? Well, a lot of times it points to the database, right? So from an APM perspective, always, the database. always points to the database, right? Always the database. I can tell you, most of the time it's not our <laughs> fault, Tom right? Walking, it's not the if database's Tom fault. Tom is watching, Tom is always the database. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, if you think about it, databases, you know, if you're looking at instrumentation of code, a lot of times you're talking about microseconds. And when you look at the database, you're talking about milliseconds, sometimes seconds. Um, so a lot of times, you know, there is weight associated with the database. APM is sort of like, they can tell you how long this query executed. That's about it, right? It kind of ends there. Um, it's kind of like uh, you see someone go inside a house and they do a bunch of stuff and they come out with a bunch of data. Um, DPA can tell you about what's going on inside the house because we've got the wait types. Um, so with this query, if I switch uh, context here, I can now switch to the wait type context and we can see the types of wait that were happening here. So a lot of it was memory and CPU. Now, from a DBA's perspective, a lot of time we say, hey, that's great. That means the database is doing work. Now, that query may be inefficient and all that kind of stuff, but it's not waiting. It's not blocked. It's <clears> not, you know, waiting on some other process to happen. It's actually doing work. I told so, you it wasn't the storage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> may not be the storage, well, right? Brian, oh, no. I had a question for you sure. on this. Would, will this detect if someone's trying to make queries that they shouldn't be? So if someone's trying to add, like, a SKU injection or, or some other kind of queries against the database to try and so, mine the data? Not directly, so yeah, so we're not doing sort of the security aspect of it, so we're not monitoring like who's connecting to the database. What Would we're really doing- abnormalities? Yes, yeah, so like if something, if, if a new query comes up that is now suddenly causing a lot of wait time, yes, it would show up, it would show up here. So it would start to appear. Now, we do have some things that will look at like, hey, the execution time of this query has changed, right? Um, we are working on anomaly detection. So anomaly detection is a more sophisticated version of that where we would be able to say, this thing's behaving abnormally for this space of time, or hey, there's this new query we've never seen before, that kind of stuff. But that's not in the product yet. Thank you. Uh, but something that we are currently working so on. So with CPU, thinking about shared environments where CPU for the overall <laughs> compute is not necessary, for the whatever measure of compute you're measuring, whether it's at the CPU, OS level. Right. Can we associate, associate that view or link that to a specific process or set of processes? So CPU uses that that process is taking up? Yeah, so if this, is, this is the CPU coming from the DPA data. So this is what the database is seeing. Um, and then these are other metrics, PLE and, and some storage. But yes, if we went over here to the metric palette, and I don't know if I've actually got data for this. I don't know why I'm looking at the screen. I should be looking here. Uh, if we go here, and we've already got all these. Uh, that's interesting. It left all the related items here. But if we were to go in here and look at, let's see. Do, 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 do. I got too many things in here now. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to yeah. show it in a demo, but the basic concept is yeah. if I have a bunch of services on the machine. Yeah and the machine is experiencing high CPU utilization, yes. is it a specific service that's making that CPU so if, I can break if, out the If service? the data is in the database, you could plot it here. Right. Okay. If you're collecting that data, absolutely. So, um, let me see, make sure I'm hitting all my points here. Um, 
So yeah, the uh, uh, so we talked about like the expansion, you know, getting the additional objects on there. Um, you know, like if we decided like, hey, um, I really think I want to see like, hey, this is on this RAID group, and I want to go see, you know, is this a data uh, a storage problem, which it never is, right? Um, you can come here and look at throughput. I can take this for the RAID group, right, and then just drag it here and add it. Oh, I don't think I got it. Let's do total. There we go. So now you can see throughput, total throughput. So not really any issues at the RAID group. So if like if you thought you had a noisy neighbor where one LUN was really affecting another LUN in the RAID group, you can go and investigate that right away and rule it out. So again, any of the data that Orion is collecting across any of, you know, we've got, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 things on Orion now, any of that data uh, can be presented here and pulled into this. And you can start at any point. So um, one of the other things we added probably since the last time you saw it is, uh, for a majority of the objects, we have sort of a starter per stack. So like if you go to uh, like a MySQL template that doesn't have DPA data, there'll be a link there to have a starter, a starting point, right? You just click on it and it'll give you a few metrics and then you can go from there. So pretty much anywhere you are in the product, you can have a, uh, have a start with this um, uh, and then start adding things. Click the related button and pull in the other pieces of the information. But the idea is that you can go build the story that you need to build. You're not limited to the views that we have. We're not forcing you to go build complicated queries. Um, you just go pick and choose, drag and drop, um, and uh, add, the, uh, add the data that you need. And then what's really awesome is, uh, I know I mentioned it before, but the, uh, the save and the load is once we have something that we really like and makes it easy to analyze, we can save that and share it with others. Um, and uh, makes it really easy to have that sort of single version of the truth um, where you're not pointing the fingers at each other all the time. So Brian, this is this is really good for being at, having so much flexibility. But the challenge with flexibility is there's just too many things to choose from. It's like me mm -hmm. coming from New Zealand to an American supermarket. I cannot choose which peanut butter I want. Right. Um, is there is there a, a functionality in the product that that says we've identified there is a problem in this category? Yeah builds you up a per stack that fits that type of category. We've seen this category of problem before. Right. Let me show you what you should be looking at. Where, where you're like, where's the network? So I'm going to put the network stack up on there. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to show you the drop frames through the firewall because that's the part of the network that normally fails. Right. Uh, absolutely. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. And we start, we're starting down that path with the defaults. So like when you, we're, we're picking the most common things. If you looking down the road, I would see we're like, okay, we're looking at the service and seeing these types of alerts or these types of problems. You know, let's build a, an intelligent uh, view for you rather than making you go pick all the pieces like, oh, this looks like, and, and actually, you know, in, in DPA, it's something we're working on. So we're importing some of this technology from Orion into DPA and, and we're building what we're calling intelligent query analysis. So we're looking at like, okay, um, if I see a lot of blocking, pull up, these metrics and this information. So we're working on that. I know that that's one of the future things that they're looking at for perf stack as well is to make it intelligence. Like, hey, these are a lot of these are common problems. I shouldn't have to go and build this view every time. Or I may be saving this view, but it may not be applicable to the next problem, and then I have to go build another one. So absolutely looking in that direction. In perf stack or even in DPA or any of its tools that use Orion, is there a way for it to tell me time? Um, month over month, year over year, or whatever. I may have one process that does exactly that every month. Right. Could you tell me that? Or is it going to be I'm going to have to look at it every month and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that known thing? Um, you know, so a couple sort of, of things. Sort of a second order approach. Yeah. You, you can go back in time. So this does go back you know, pretty far, and you have custom time ranges. So you could go and look for processes like that. Um, and then we're also looking at building tagging. So like you could tag processes with information and then be able to pull that up. I guess what I'm looking for you is automatically find for me that this is happening every month on this day. Yeah. And just ta and do an automatic tag. So it's like, okay, this is a known thing that happens every 30 days. Right. Instead of me trying to figure it out myself, because to be honest, the less I have to do, the easier my job is. Right, and that's, that would be one of the goals for the DPA product. I won't, I won't speak for Orion, but for DPA, the anomaly detection stuff that we're looking at would do that for you. And basically, like, hey, if you're, if, like, if you're running, you know, a monthly data dump on, you know, the third weekend of the month, 
you know, I don't want to be alerting you in the middle of the night that, oh, you've got high I.O., right? We want to go like, oh, that happens every month on the third weekend of the month. That's normal behavior. So that's, that's kind of some of the things that we're looking for in the DPA side is to look at, you know, when is the instance behaving over time and then what are the components that are making that up, you know, the different queries that are making up that wait time and then be able to say, yeah, that's normal behavior, no, no problem, or wait, that normally doesn't happen then. So that's kind of what we're looking for or in the future is, is, is to take the anomaly detection and sort of do that work for you. So if you have a really busy database, and this is all mm -hmm. lots of blue on it, let's right. say, over like several months, is there a way to actually find a low-grade exfiltration? In other words, a small amount of data exfiltrating all the time across something that is maybe not known? So tying this more to the NPM and tying it to everything else so that I know that data exfiltration is happening, it's just kind of being hidden. So <clears throat> with DPA, the, the way DPA works, probably not if it's a small amount of data. So we're really looking for things that are actually, you know, it's a sampling technology, so if it's not happening often enough with enough wait time, then we're not going to see it. So we're not tracing every query. Um, in terms of actual connectivity, um, I think Steve is going to talk about uh, our automatic dependency mapping, and I think it can see transient connections. Um, so I'll let, if that answers your question, I'll let Steve uh, go into more depth with that. But it would be able to say things like, oh, there's a connection here, now there's not a connection, now there is a connection, that kind of stuff. Well, it's actually a constant connection usually. Okay. In, in some cases, I should say, not usually. But when you start thinking about, I mean, you mentioned the fact that you don't grab user data for queries. And who, who logged in, who did this? Oh, no, we, we do. <coughs> okay. Well, 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 here, let me just drag it on the screen and we can look at it. Would be the easiest thing. Uh, database wait time. So we have user, right? So if I just drag this here. So these are the different users. And then if I highlight this, it'll give us more information on the users over here. So we, we can see the users, but again, it's associated with the queries that have enough wait time. To do that, so I'm not tracking. So, so DPA is not trying to track, you know, every connection to the database or anything like that. It's more, it's a performance analysis tool. So we're really looking at like what's running on the server, how long are people waiting for it, and then we go get a bunch of associated data, which <coughs> yeah, users is one of those. If I set wait time low enough, right? So that wait time threshold. If I set it low enough, I could grab everything. You could, but it's really looking at it's a it's a top down. Like, so what are your? I think our default is top. 50 or top 150, I can't remember. So you'd have to increase that. And of course, you'd be increasing how fast the database is growing and how fast the product is and all those types of things. Okay. But yes, you could extend that out and, and find smaller and smaller queries. 